our souls. Refresh our lives. Lord, may we drink your goodness, your blessing. Holy Spirit of God, fill us, for we don't want to be thirsty. Quench that thirst for you. And Father God, today particularly I lift up my friend Ken, Lord, as he has complex um, neck surgery tomorrow. And Father God, you know all the ins and outs of that. And we pray for wisdom of doctors and for the surgeon's hand and for recovery. And that all goes well to give him more movement, give him more flexibility, relieve the pain. We pray, Lord, we thank you for this uh, continuing journey that he is on. And we thank you for doctors and nurses and their their ability and their wisdom and their skill. So bless Ken tomorrow, be with Kath and the family, Lord, as Ken has his operation tomorrow. So Lord, just be with him. Thank you that he's a man who thirsts after you, as many of us here in this room do. We're hungry for you. We're thirsty for you. God, come and meet us now in these next few moments. In Jesus' name, amen. It's interesting that Jesus said that he was thirsty, that he, that he needed a drink. He's uh, nailed to a cross. Uh, excuse me, guys, uh, a little thirsty up here? Probably not. Um, that's my, my amusing sense of humour. So they find a jar of this sour wine vinegar that, that would sit there, and, and the guards and the soldiers would sip on that as well, and they soak it in a sponge, and they hold it up to Jesus' lips so he can have a drink. This was the second drink that Jesus was offered. The first one sort of was around the cross. They're getting him ready. They're nailing him on. They're putting all the bits and pieces together, the post in the ground. And I think it's about Mark 15, 23. They offer him wine, drugged with myrrh up on the screen there for you. But, but he refuses this drink. He says no. Maybe they wanted to mock him. I don't know. They offered him, they'd often give this to criminals who were being crucified. The women would do this as an act of compassion. It, it sort of made you a bit more relaxed, made you a bit groggy. But friends, Jesus was focused on finishing what God gave him to do. His mind was clear, his gaze was fixed, he was focused on the task at hand. He didn't need that. I don't need that. Maybe he pushed it away. I don't know. I don't need that. I want us to picture something in our mind. Picture something that is hindering you. Picture something that's stopping you Getting to where God wants you to be and say, hey, I don't need that and push it away. I don't need that. So now it's about the sixth hour, Jesus is on the cross and he's saying, I'm thirsty. Remember that same voice that created the world, that same voice that can speak and rain will fall from the sky. That same voice that had the power to flood the earth and, the only, the, and only those that survived were those that were upon the ark. Jesus needs a drink and we're sort of a bit surprised. The cross of Calvary reaching out across time and space once again. And they put a sponge on a branch of hyssop and, and they lift it up to Jesus' lips. They used to use a hyssop branch at Passover to put the blood of the lamb on the doorposts. But now, but now it's the lamb of God who is bleeding. And his blood will save us all. His blood will save us all. And they gave him some vinegar wine to drink for his thirst. How could he be thirsty? How could God struggle with the normal things that we face? Needing a drink. It's a struggle. 
I'm thirsty on the cross. The place we need to start is back at the Garden of Gethsemane. And in that garden there, where he went to pray, before he drank this, this cup of suffering, It's one thing for us to come to church and to hear of God's love and salvation, to talk about God leading us and calling us. It's like this beautiful cup. But it's what's in the cup that makes the difference. We need to take a drink. We need to take a step. We need to get out of the boat. We need to go through that storm. And that's when the calling of God and the plan of God and the purposes of God become real for you and I. We can hold on to it, but we need to take some action. We get excited by the concept of God using me and God using you, but we need to come and we need to take a drink. Take a drink. When Jesus was in the garden, he prayed. If there's any other way, any other way, Father, to, to get this thing done, let this cup pass from me. He drank it, but it was a struggle. A struggle to drink. He took it all, faced it all, suffered it all for all of humanity, arms outstretched upon a cross. You know how I, he struggled? Struggled in that garden, Matthew 26, 39. Bowed with his face to the ground in anguish, in prayer. In desperation, praying, my Father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. My Father, my Father, if it's possible. But if I have to suffer, I will. I will drink it down. For I know that this is the only way, that this is the plan and this is the path and this is the door of hope and salvation for all of humanity. I will go to the cross. I'll be beaten. I'll be mocked. I'll suffer. I will go. Yes, if I have to be alone. Yes, if I have to cry. Yes, if I have to struggle. Yes, it will be hard, but not my will. But yours be done. I will go. Jesus is trapped between what he wants and what God wills. Have we ever been trapped? Ever been stuck? Oh, great, three honest people. Remember, it's only those who hunger and thirst that can be filled. Jesus got down in the garden and he prayed so much that, that his, his sweat was like droplets of blood. His mates were napping. Couldn't even support him. Couldn't even pray for Jesus in his time of need and in his struggle and in his anguish. Of course he was thirsty. He went through a lot to get to the cross. Death would be a victory, not a loss. Just because you're a Christian, do not think that it will be an easy ride. It wasn't for Jesus, so it won't be for us. Fully man, fully God. He was from glory, but wrapped in frailty. He is eternal, but trapped in time and space. For this particular time, for this particular day, for this particular moment. We don't like to think of Jesus our Saviour, struggling, hurt, desperate, thirsty, hot, cold, tired. 
But he was God. We just like the Jesus who opens his mouth and clicks his fingers and says, be healed. Stop that. Because we just like to think that Jesus will just walk into our situation and fix it all and sort it out and all be nice. He'll come and he'll click his fingers and it'll be done. The instant two minute noodle Jesus. The quick fix saviour. Amen. That's what we want. But Jesus has a need. And it makes me think of how he sees me. My needs, my sin, my weakness, my shame. He sees us as we are and loves us and is on that cross for us. He carried it all. It was heavy. It was heavy. There's a familiar story in John 4. We have a lady, a woman who's thirsty. She's run out of water and, and Jesus goes somewhere where he didn't plan to go. But the disciples were used to that now. Because they knew, hey, he must have a purpose. Something must be going on. And so Jesus goes through Samaria. Everything did have a purpose. He went out of his way to go through Samaria where a Jewish person would normally not go. He goes to Samaria, sits down at a well, waits for a woman to arrive who needs to get water. She's thirsty too, her family's thirsty. It's in the middle of the day, it's hot and dry, thirsty weather. And it's John chapter 4, 6 and 7. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired from a long walk, sat wearily beside the well about noontime. Here's Jesus again, having needs like you and I, struggling with his humanity. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Please give me a drink. The only reason that she would come at that time of the day is so that she wouldn't have to see anybody, have to interact with people, have to chat with them, be reminded of her shame, be reminded of her guilt, be reminded of how embarrassing her life had been. She didn't think anyone would be there, didn't think anyone would see her. She's thirsty, she needs water, so she comes to the world. So Jesus sits by this well waiting for her. The stage is set. Give me a drink. He knows all about her situation, but he just asks for a drink. Why are you talking to me? Why are you bothering with me? I'm a woman, you're a, you're a Jew, I'm a Samaritan. It's just getting more complex and more weird. But Jesus came because he was thirsty. He came to encounter a woman. For he came to quench her spiritual thirst. And he comes to quench our spiritual thirst. All we need to do is to pick up that cup. Pick up that glass, grab that mug, and drink. Drink. Let him satisfy your thirst. Let him satisfy your thirsty soul today. Today. Let him refresh those dry mouths. Let him refresh your thirsty spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Are you thirsty? Drink.